the harmonizing of payments messages message formats in accordance with the ISO 20022 standard is a global multi-year effort. It requires substantial industry collaboration. Now, some jurisdictions implemented ISO for their high value platforms earlier this year, most, lo no, most notably the euro in March and sterling in June. Now that migration of the clearinghouse interbank payment system known as CHIPS for the U.S. dollar is slated for April 2024. That makes it next in the queue. And I'm pleased to be joined now by Richard Zena, the Senior Vice, Pre Vice President Product Development at the Clearinghouse. And he's here to talk about the challenges and benefits of the work ahead. Hi there, thanks so much for uh, taking the time to join us. Thank you, Janella, my pleasure. So Richard, talk a little bit about the effort to harmonize uh, global payment message formats in accordance with this emerging uh, ISO standard and how it underscores that this theme that we're talking about here at, at uh, Cyboss of uh, collaborative finance in a fragmented world. Well, it's an ideal representation of this year's uh, Cyboss theme. Uh, historically, payment system operators uh, have operated on legacy message formats uh, that may have suited uh, their domestic uh, needs, uh, but for an interconnected global world, it is wholly unsatisfactory. And that idiosyncrasy adds costs, uh, hinders innovation, uh, exacerbates risks, and it is the desire to go from a fragmented world to a harmonized world uh, that really brings us to Cybos together on this theme uh, and many others. Mm. So what's the value proposition of message standardization for CHIPS participants and their end user customers? So as a uh, infrastructure operator, our responsibility, our obligation is to establish the foundation uh, upon which our participants and their end user customers can thrive. Uh, with respect to message standardization, uh, the value proposition is to enhance straight through processing, uh, to allow participants to lever uh, enriched data content, uh, to make use of structured message formats that are machine readable, and especially uh, to uh, support innovation around a common message suite. I, I think a very relevant uh, analogy uh, in the physical world is the effort to standardize shipping containers uh, in the 1950s. Mm. Uh, which led to what we now refer to as the global supply chain. Uh, that effort uh, allowed shipping uh, to use uh, intermodal uh, transport across ships, uh, trains, and trucks uh, to expand uh, capacity because containers are stackable and especially to support inventory management uh, because they are trackable. And we're really hoping to spawn the same type of innovation and to catalyze the same experience with respect to, to payments. Uh, I would also note uh, that containers these days uh, can also be used uh, for housing. Mm. And I'm guessing that that was not in the original business case. <laughs> no. uh, so we're looking forward to unanticipated innovation uh, with respect to message standardization as well. Absolutely. We mentioned uh, that CHIPS is next in line uh, in the global market infrastructure for implementation yeah. in April 2024. So how's that effort going? So uh, first, our congratulations uh, to other jurisdictions that have preceded, uh, may their success uh, presage uh, our success. Mm. Uh, as noted, uh, we are slated for implementation of, in April of 2024. Uh, we are delighted to have the monopolized attention now of our participants uh, and their supporting uh, vendors, and we're getting tremendous uh, support uh, across the community. Uh, ISO, as you may uh, imagine, is a consuming uh, preoccupation, consumes all the oxygen uh, of the organization, of our participants uh, and their vendors, and we look forward to the ISO implementation, not merely for the value uh, that message standardization will bring, uh, but also for the opportunity it will provide uh, to move forward with other elements of the portfolio post ISO, uh, such as extended hours, uh, enhancing liquidity efficiency, attracting new participants and the like. So it's a very excited, exciting era. You mentioned the other uh, jurisdictions that, that have brought this in. Have you gleaned any lessons uh, from uh, those implementations from, from the other uh, jurisdictions? Uh, absolutely. And, and one of the benefits of being one of the trailing uh, infrastructures in queue is that we glean insights uh, from the experiences of other jurisdictions. And in this domain, uh, we rise and fall uh, as one. 
Uh, in fact, the high value payment system operators uh, convened for our annual meeting uh, this Sunday, uh, graciously hosted uh, by Payments Canada. And uh, the topic of lessons learned on ISO was the principal uh, agenda topic uh, in that venue. And we gleaned a lot of insights uh, that we've tried to incorporate uh, into our program, uh, including uh, the importance of active vendor management and engagement, uh, given the critical dependency uh, on the vendor community, uh, the necessity of uh, dress rehearsals, and test early, test often. Mm -hmm. So we have six dress rehearsals uh, slated for our ISO implementation, three volitional, uh, three mandatory. Uh, and finally, uh, the criticality of participant assurance. Uh, given the nature of CHIPS uh, as a systemic uh, market infrastructure, we feel an affirmative obligation uh, to ensure the readiness uh, of our community prior to go live. So we've incorporated a formal assurance program and attestation that participants will have to make prior to our cutover uh, that has been informed by the experiences of other jurisdictions. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very important element of our process. We should mention that CHIPS is one of two uh, high value payment platforms in the US, the other being the federal Fedwire uh, fund service. So are you coordinating uh, with the Fed and what's the rationale uh, for the CHIPS Im implementation coming before the Fedwire implementation? Uh, absolutely, there's very active uh, collaboration with our Federal Reserve uh, colleagues. Uh, we share many of the same participants and have a desire to, uh, to minimize uh, the collective uh, industry burden uh, with respect to our collective uh, implementations. Uh, I will suggest that from a strategic uh, standpoint, uh, the ISO imperative uh, probably resonates uh, on a higher plane uh, for CHIPS participants, uh, given the cross-border nature of, of our platform. So there was a judgment that CHIPS should precede mm -hmm. uh, Fedwire funds. Uh, with respect to our implementations, and we are slated for April 2024, uh, I believe the Fed in Q1 uh, 2025. There's an, also an important resiliency uh, dynamic at play uh, with respect to the staggered uh, implementation. If either operator uh, has uh, some issue uh, in our implementations, obviously we hope both uh, go uh, cleanly, but if either of us has some type of disruption, the other is available mm. uh, to maintain the integrity of high value uh, US dollar payments uh, during that uh, experience. Uh, so there's an important resiliency uh, dynamic at play as well. Richard, it's been so great to chat with you and we are wishing you all the best in this exciting uh, couple of months ahead. And we hope you enjoy the week here at Cybos. It's been our absolute pleasure. Thank you for the invitation.